In this experiment, I'm going to demonstrate the required practical for finding the specific heat capacity of an object. And to do this, we need to, um, first of all, choose our object that we're going to use. So I've got three different metals. These cylinders are um, a solid lump of metal and they have a mass of one kilogram. That is aluminium. This one is copper and this one is steel. And what we're going to do is we're going to transfer energy to these objects, a known amount of energy, and we're going to measure the temperature change. And since we also know the mass, we'll be able to work out what the specific heat capacity of the object is. I'm going to start by uh, using the aluminium, so I'll just put those aside. We're going to use an electrical heater to transfer thermal energy to the block. Uh, and the reason we're using an electrical heater to do that is because uh, we can very easily find out the amount of energy that is transferred. So the uh, energy that's transferred via the electrical heater uh, is found by um, recording the current and the potential difference. And it, it, by multiplying those two together, I can find out the uh, power of the device and then from the power I can calculate the energy transferred. So to set up this practical, I'm going to put some petroleum jelly onto the bulb of the thermometer and the purpose of that is to ensure that there's a good thermal contact between the bulb of the thermometer and the metal so that we get a true reading of the temperature of the metal. Um, and I've connected the heating element up to a power supply. And uh, I've done that in such a way as I can find the uh, potential difference across the heater, the voltage, and also the current uh, flowing through the heater so that I will know um, how much energy has been supplied. And that is placed into this hole here, like so. So one of the assumptions of this experiment is uh, we assume that all of the uh, energy, electrical energy supplied by the heater is transferred to thermal energy in the block. Uh, and that's a reasonable assumption, but one of the problems is that as the block gets hotter, it will transfer thermal energy from itself to the surroundings. So rather than carry the experiment out with the block uh, naked, as it were, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insulate the block. So I've placed it inside this can, and you can see I've got some thermal insulation there so that um, the, none of the thermal energy from the block gets transferred to the surroundings. Well, I say none, but obviously you can see that a certain amount uh, might be lost, perhaps through the top, top of the object. So I've placed that in there, and I'll, I need to allow a little time for the thermometer to reach the uh, correct temperature, the temperature of the block. Now, uh, a common strategy in physics is to collect uh, results so that we can plot a graph and find the gradient of the graph. What that does is that gives us a large number of data points so that will reduce the effect of random error in our experiment um, and hopefully provide us with a more accurate calculation of the specific heat capacity of this aluminium. So, so the first material that we'll be using is aluminium and that's a one kilogram block and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to record the temperature uh, at the start of the experiment, which is in fact 20 degrees centigrade, and I'm going to simultaneously start the timer and turn the heater on. And I can see that the current that I'm delivering is 3.42 amps, and the potential difference is 10.3. Well, it's moving around a little, but I'm going to say that's averaging at about 10.32 volts. It may not be necessary to record the current and the potential difference every time, um, but it will give us some indication if it's changing, because the, we, we need that to work out the power. So I wait for one minute to go by, and then after one minute I'm going to record the uh, 
the temperature and check whether the values have changed for the uh, current and the potential difference. So here we go, approaching one minute, and I can see that the current is still 3.42, and the potential difference is around about 10.32, doesn't seem to have changed very much. And the temperature of the block has gone up by one degree. So I'll uh, continue to record these results now, but for the purposes of the video, I'm going to speed up the time so that you don't have to wait for the uh, seven minutes that it'll take to collect these results. And there we have it, those are now a complete set of results. You can see I've managed to have missed a, missed a minute out there, but I, I made sure that my readings were correct. That's two minutes and that's four minutes. Um, so uh, we can calculate the power of the heater from multiplying the current times the voltage. And the energy supplied is the power times time. And we can use that then in our equation, so um, that the specific heat capacity...